If you play SVOU, you may have noticed an uptick in hyper offense teams. You're not imagining this. Usage of Pokemon typically only seen on HO, such as Iron Moth and Roaring Moon, has been very high recently, with both Pokemon being at 20% usage. This puts Iron Moth at spot 7 on usage and Roaring Moon at spot 8. Both the latter and SVOU tournament games are filled with HO teams. In this video, I'm going to answer three questions. Why is HO so popular? Does it deserve the usage it gets, i.e. is it really that good? And lastly, will HO get better or worse as the metagame progresses? Also, before we start, I want to clarify that I will be using the terms Hyper Offense and HO interchangeably during this video. To start, let's go over why HO is so popular. The first reason is that it's a lot easier to play than most playstyles. HO typically has a dedicated suicide lead that will be the starting Pokemon almost all the time, and from there, you just keep switching in sweepers that can set up on whatever is on the field. It's not quite that simple. You still need to consider which order you need to go into certain sweepers, when to switch and preserve a sweeper for later, and of course, make the crucial decision of which sweeper to Terra. That being said, the flowchart process of playing HO makes it easier than balance, bulky offense, or offense teams for less experienced players or players who don't often play SVOU. HO teams are also quite forgiving to misplays. If you misuse or sack a Pokemon with a balanced team, you'll likely lose the game since the structure of your team is shattered. If you throw away a sweeper on HO, oh well, you still have four more. The second reason HO is so popular is that it's easy to build. Building an SVOU is generally a nightmare. Trying to build a team that can stand up to threats like Curem, Ogre Pond Wellspring, Raging Bolt, Dragonite, Iron Moth, Iron Valiant, Roaring Moon, Darkrai, Zamazenta, and all of their common Terra types is nearly impossible. During the process of building and testing your team, you'll experience many losses due to threats you didn't consider or just couldn't manage to fit in answers for. I would describe the SVOU building experience like trying to plug up holes in a ship with your hands, but you only have two hands and new holes keep appearing. Whatever you do, you're sinking. Except when you build Hyper Offense. HO doesn't have to consider defensive utility the same way other playstyles do. You still need answers for priority users like King Gambit and very fast threats like Booster Speed Iron Valiant, but most other Pokémon can be more or less ignored. That's because part of HO's game plan is sacking Pokémon. Switching is rare with HO teams. Usually they'd rather just let whatever is on the field die to grant the next Pokémon a safe entry. So, instead of worrying about having to switch into an Ogre Pond Wellspring, you can just sack whatever is on the field and then go into your Roaring Moon. So many of the threats that plague most teams are non-issues for HO teams, so building is a lot easier. The third reason people love HO so much is that you can get away with running a lot of lower tier Pokémon better than most playstyles. Due to the aforementioned threats, oftentimes balanced and bulkier teams can't afford to run a lot of niche or lower tier Pokemon. HO, however, due to its more loose team structure, can run one or two wacky things and still perform really well. A hyper offense team with Mimikyu and Sudowoodo recently hit rank 20 in OU. There are a lot of weird leads you can get away with, like Sudowoodo, Dedunsparce, Mamoswine, Hydreigon, Lycanroc, and more. Even if it's not the lead, you can typically throw an odd sweeper like Frostmoth or Latios onto your team, and it will still perform quite well. The last reason HO is so popular is its variety. Due to the massive influx of booster energy Pokémon, HO has more options than ever. Furthermore, strong screen setters like Dragapult and Grimmsnarl, when paired with these strong new additions to HO, have given dual screens a surge in viability. Sticky web teams also utilize booster energy Pokemon to great effect. This item is extremely strong as long as the user doesn't switch out. The perfect item for HO. In previous generations, often only one or two styles of HO were viable. For example, in generation 8, sticky web is considered unviable and not worth using, and most HO teams utilize the same pool of about 10 Pokemon. SVOU has one of the most diverse HO landscapes of any generation. 
This means more players will be drawn to the archetype since it's more likely to have a specific style or Pokemon that suits them. Now let's answer our second question. Does HO deserve this usage? Is it really that good? I would say no. Although HO is certainly stronger than in Generation 7 or 8, it's still not the top playstyle. That designation would go to bulky offense at the moment. Despite HO having lots of variety, many powerful sweepers, and making excellent use of Terra, it still struggles with unaware Pokémon and priority. This generation introduced some of the strongest unaware Pokémon we've ever seen with Skeledurge, Clawdsire, and Dondozo, as well as some of the strongest priority users, adding Raging Bolt and King Gambit, and giving Dragonite and Rillaboom the ability to Terra. Thanks to these unaware Pokémon and priority users, HO suffers the same curse it always has, inconsistency. HO teams are often at the mercy of a bad matchup, and the same flowchart way of playing that makes HO so easy to play can also make it nearly impossible to outplay a bad matchup. If your opponent has strong priority and answers to the specific sweepers you chose, there's not much you can do. Still, HO is strong enough that it deserves to be taken seriously, and it certainly has deserves and has a significant usage in OU, even if not quite as high as it currently does. With all the tools at the disposal of this threatening archetype, it's a force to be reckoned with even if it's not the best. Let's move on to the third question. What is the fate of HO? Will it get better or worse as the months go by? Before I answer this question, please remember to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Now, unfortunately for Hyper Offense fans, it is likely that HO will get worse. This is a trend that has been observed in many generations. HO teams thrive on metagame instability. The more broken threats are in a tier, the better odds HO teams have of sweeping you with the Pokémon you're unprepared for. The recent ban of Gouging Fire was a blow to Hyper Offense, and it may face more losses in coming days. Even bans of Pokémon that aren't strictly HO Pokémon, such as Ogre Pond Wellspring, would hurt HO. When balanced and bulkier teams have more freedom in the building process and have fewer breakers to cover, they can afford to consider their HO matchup more and work in counters. The potential bans of Kurem, Ogre Pond Wellspring, and Darkrai would all hurt Hyper Offense. Still, there is one ban that might help HO teams out a lot, Zamazenta. Despite Zamazenta being a staple on some HO teams, if it were to be banned, threats like Roaring Moon, Dragonite, SD Iron Valiant, King Gambit, DD Kiram, and even lower tier options like Serilege and Blaziken would become a lot better, giving HO more effective tools. I personally think a Zamazenta ban is unlikely to occur, but many players do want it banned, so there is some hope for HO players as the metagame progresses. Even if Zamazenta doesn't get banned, and many other Pokémon do to the detriment of HO, I expect HO will always have a place in the SV metagame. With Terra existing, SV will never be completely stable, and HO will always have access to extremely threatening sweepers. I believe that SV will forever be a generation where HO is viable at a top level in many forms. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.